rally leaders for decades. A fast form of mass transit from downtown to the ocean. Well, now plans are underway to do just that, but they're hitting a roadblock. Citizens who don't want light rail going through their neighborhood. Sound familiar? Tony Gignard goes to an affluent community on the west side who wants to reroute the Expo Line. Plans for building a light rail system on the west side of Los Angeles will eventually impact everyone, especially those who drive to, from, or live there. The project has become an all-consuming, frustrating, and often contentious debate among people calling west side communities their home. People have said, other here, we're encouraging them to look at these impacts that are concerning to the community. These discussions center around plans for the Exposition Corridor Transit Project Phase 2, the second part of a planned light rail line from downtown Los Angeles to Santa Monica, the city to the sea. I am so looking forward to this becoming what it should be. Think of Daryl Clark as a self-taught unofficial expert on the issue of light rail. After 18 years volunteering with the group Friends for Expo Transit, Clark is a familiar voice in the call for support of this project. The first half of downtown Culver City is under construction this year. They say it will open by 2010. They're now planning the second half from Culver City the rest of the way to Santa Monica. And that's the sticking point. That's the sticking point, and it's really important because that's what will get all the people who are clogging the Santa Monica Freeway to the jobs on the west side in West LA and Santa Monica. The 1400 home community of Cheviot Hills, a neighborhood nestled between Century City and the 10 Freeway, has become ground zero. Community meetings are being held to address the sticking points. Where should rail stations be placed? Are over or underpasses needed? What about safety and what about the noise? But most of all, where should the second phase of the rail line go? Two primary alignments are being considered. One would follow Venice Boulevard to Sepulveda and extend approximately 7.8 miles. The other would follow the exposition right-of-way already owned by the MTA. That route would run 6.9 miles and border the community of Cheviot Hills, a route a network of homeowners associations have voted to oppose. I've got an advocate of alternatives, Three. not for construction. Are you wanting this to go down through Expo, through the, the neighborhood? No, no, no. The people who live in Cheviot Hills are going to take this bloody train? No, they're going to get in their cars. For one thing, it goes right past the school. If the school is right next to an extremely wide, very fast road, over and down, that is more dangerous to children than that one that light rail could ever be. Residents are being asked to submit written comments, including options not yet considered, rather than make a public presentation. Traffic time, traffic overtime. We wind up getting a lot more meaningful input rather than having certain groups dominate uh, a discussion in an open public meeting. We, get, we wound up getting a lot more feedback from a more diverse community group that way. Including Friends for Expo Transit, uh, supporters of the Venice Sepulveda Round. I think it's more a question of the best use of the tax dollars and putting the stops and the tracks where the most will be the most convenient for the most people. And then you have another group that believes the exposition right of way alignment is the better of the two options. After all, these railroad tracks have been here for years and have a place in the city's history. The tracks were originally built in 1875 for a steam railroad stretching from downtown Los Angeles to Santa Monica. That was electrified when all the trolley car lines went in, the big red cars. And so the line has been here and was here long before the houses were. Colin Leonard and Sarah Hayes are co-chairs of the group Light Rail for Cheviot. It was formed after they attended a homeowners association light rail committee meeting. And I was appalled to see that it was mostly people opposed and that they were very adamantly opposed and unwilling to even listen or wait for facts to come out. They took us on a walk along the stretch of the winding exposition right of way just below Cheviot Hills. The fewer at-grade crossings will be involved, and it will be the cheapest because MTA already owns this. All of the houses along here were built 
most of them were built when there was a freight train and red, red car lines going through here. So it does seem a little odd that people would now say that we can't use it for rail. But what we're trying to do is work for mitigations that will make the line acceptable and welcome to our neighbors. We want an underpass at Overland. We want sound walls where they will be necessary. We want really safe conditions around Overland School. And these things we think we can get better if we work with the construction authority rather than totally opposing the entire idea of the line. So this is here. It's, it's wide and it, it's open and empty. And the light rail could go right through here without impacting the, the traffic um, on, the, on the city streets. Alleviating traffic is what both sides of this Expo alignment debate want. They feel trapped in their neighborhoods by gridlock. But the war of words bidding neighbor against neighbor has had no resolution for more than two decades. But in 20 years, uh, they started their fight 20 years ago, there's been turnover. There are new people in the area, there are new people in the neighborhood, and uh, we want to be part of a big city. It's Leonard's belief that running the Expo Rail here, the right of way runs along the southern edge, the southwestern edge of Cheviot Hills, will link the community with the rest of the city. If they talk about that it makes sense to run it where the train used to be, but that's not where the riders are. Nancy Tatler is a longtime Cheviot Hills resident and homeowners association member. I am pro light rail. Don't get me wrong, tell me, I am pro light rail. But I am also pro light rail, five blocks, five blocks south on Venice. I think our city will die if it doesn't have light rail. But put the light rail where your ridership is, not to sleepy residential communities. What once was good isn't good now. Cattler has lived in this neighborhood since 1968 and remembers when the trains ran through. I mean, the train ran, I mean, it was trolley then. We're talking, you're talking like horse and buggy to jets. I mean, there's no comparison, no comparison. But comparisons are being made and viewpoints are being expressed over a plan to resolve a traffic problem that has been bad and is only getting worse. We have over 800,000 people within two miles of this line. We have all of these jobs. The worst traffic congestion anywhere, all you got to do is read the paper and people are just saying, you know, this is horrible. We built the transit-oriented development before we had the transit. The jobs, the high-density housing. Now we're trying to play catch-up to bring the transit in. And because of that, everyone is paying the price. I'm Tony Ginyard for Life and Times. So what do you think about the Expo line? You can post your opinion on our blog. Just go to kcg.org and click on the Life and Times blog.